Greetings, welcome to the latest of my deep dive videos. Today I'm going to explore the journey of the gorgeous Venus as she sashays her way through the Earth sign of Capricorn, which begins on the 11th of November through to the 7th of December. Venus can be very much about money and also about relationships. What can you expect over that period of time? I'm going to share with you the archetypes of Venus, but also what is Venus in Capricorn, but also the event chart, the exact moment when Venus arrives. What are the other planetary influences? The ascendant from a Placidus viewpoint is fascinating at naught degrees in Cancer, so directly opposite Venus. That can be a beautiful combination I got to share that with you too. I'll also share the solar event chart. And then I'm going to outline the upcoming aspects. There is a bit of a punishing one uh, we can expect between Venus and Saturn. But also, although Neptune and Venus have been in a tangled connection over the last few days, ironically, at the start of December, they're actually going to align quite beautifully. And then I'm going to go through each of the tile signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavour of what you can expect for your Ascendant, Sun or the Moon. I'm astrologer Patrick Arundel. Thank you for joining me. If you're new here, if you have any thoughts, please share them. This is very much a community. I have found that about 50% of people who view my videos regularly are not subscribers. If that's you, please help the channel to thrive. Click that sub button and also the bell notification symbol. If you're a patron, you can download a Venus factoid, including the mythology of the sign. You can become a patron from $3 a month. I'm so grateful for the patrons I have. Thank you so much. You can also make a contribution uh, to me through Patreon, if you wish, uh, to help the channel. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, I am a consulting astrologer. It's the main part of my job. You can check out my testimonials below. I don't edit these. See what other people have found working directly with me. You can order your personal year 2025 forecast report based on your unique birth data and I'm giving you a free gift of your zodiac uh, general forecast, love forecast, Chinese, but also Vedic forecast, written by my Vedic astrologer colleague, Nishkor Cheya, who's worked with me for about 20 years. You get those as a free gift, but also 30% off and my life roadmap report. All this information is fantastic value. The personal reports are totally unique to each person they're produced for and will give you Syrian insights. Please see the link below for more. So Venus moves into Capricorn at 6.26 p.m. Universal on the 11th of November. Now, Venus, through its rulership of Taurus, which is an Earth sign like Capricorn, is very much about those values, self-worth, possessions, can be about our attraction to the things we enjoy eating or growing. If you're a crafter or a maker, you could have a strong Venusian influence in your situation. Maybe all the way to painting and potting, things like that. But Venus, Venus's rulership of Libra is airy, of course, and here it's very much about how we connect to one another. But it's also about how we present ourselves that old saying of first impressions count is probably a very Venus influenced uh, metaphor, but it can also be about diplomacy, um, fashion. Uh, if you're a dedicated follower of fashion, it's because you want to present a very stylized view. However, despite all that graciousness and great qualities and a dislike of perhaps coarseness and harsh uh, attitudes, there can be a little bit of insincerity uh, and superficiality that comes through Venus's rulership of Libra. But what about Venus in Capricorn? Well, if you're in a relationship and in a relationship which is going well, but progressing, 
and you want to take it to that next level of commitment, it's possible through these next 26 days that you may make uh, something more formal. For example, you could move in together, announce your engagement, or even that big day to get wed. If you're in a professional situation, the quality of your interactions with uh, colleagues is going to be very important. And it may be that you're going to have to interact with some quite influential people. So therefore, that more Venusian energy of being you know, aware of what other people may expect and leaning into that is something that could be really appreciated to help you make that brilliant first impression. But people who have Venus in the sign of Capricorn could have, when they're younger, a little bit of reservation uh, or shyness. And it, in a way, it's because people are very conscious that a relationship is something that's important, uh, but they could be a little bit reserved, find it uh, rather more difficult to be so flamboyant. But certainly once a person with Venus in Capricorn is into a relationship that they're enjoying, they're likely to be very loyal and dependable. On the screen now, I'm sharing the event chart based on Placidus, but also Universal and also Greenwich. Why Greenwich? Because of the prime meridian. And you can see the ascendant is at naught degrees in Cancer, which is quite incredible. The synchronicity here, because that means Venus is directly opposite that ascendant. But ironically, it is just tucked into the sixth house, which is a much more pragmatic position for Venus to be in. It's where we can be aware of our responsibilities and obligations. The best way to bring uh, a greater harmony to a romantic tie with Venus in house six is to get a fairer share of the domestic chores and make sure that we're doing those practical but thoughtful gestures that actually can really make our hearts glow. So it's not so much about the flowers and the candle at dinner. It's more about, uh, look, I'll do this, you take a seat, I'll cook dinner tonight. Those type of things can really be appreciated. The reason that Venus is just tucked up in house six is the ascendant is naught degrees and 48 minutes in the sign of Cancer. But obviously the ascendant in Cancer can have a desire for an emotional uh, balance, whereas the opposite sign of Capricorn, where Venus is, is that much more practical uh, uh, dimension. So if we can get a balance between the two, so if we receive what other people want in a pleasant way, but are prepared to respond in a practical and thoughtful manner, that's going to help things no end. But also I want to draw your attention to the position of Neptune. Neptune's up there in the 11th house in Placidus at 27 degrees and 19, continuing its his retrograde. But over the last uh, week, Venus and Neptune have been in a square, which has been building up as it applied. It's now separated, so it's a disassociate square. But it's worth bearing in mind because however much we're trying to find that midpoint between leaning into what other people want and sharpening up our listening skills and being very receptive, but also at the same time protecting our boundaries, which is important even if we're expressing the need for them in a delicate and pleasant way, what Neptune's been doing in the square to Venus over the last few days has been creating the potential for unreality. So if someone has been in your world or you've been drawn to who's had quite the mesmeric uh, impact but has felt rather elusive, perhaps unavailable, mysterious, perhaps the mystery perhaps to begin with, was the thing that drew you in. But if you're really not sure what you're dealing with, Venus moving into Capricorn is a call to action to find a point where you can feel more solid and secure. And if you don't, it's perhaps an encouragement to step back a little bit. But also I want to share with you the position of Mars, because obviously Venus and Mars work together in terms of a relationship. Mars is in the very charismatic Leo, uh, but it's in the second house, which has an echo of Venus's uh, rulership of Taurus. So Mars there can get caught up with 
uh, material uh, uh, presentations. So we could be attracted to someone who's perhaps doing well, and that can be uh, very reassuring, but not to the point that that actually bends what's really right for us. So they're in a quincunx, they're not therefore in a particularly good alliance. So based in terms of placida, six and two doesn't seem too bad. But in terms of equal house, which I'm sharing on the screen now, you can see Mars is very much about charisma. So our need to get what we want in terms of perhaps the more amorous side of romance. And Venus is kind of saying up there at the top of the chart, well, hold on, how sincere are you? So that may be something to guide you. If you do have that person that is really very hard to resist at the moment, perhaps from a physical attraction viewpoint, Venus is asking you to try to uh, levitate your view of this situation to what is safest for you and gives you some kind of uh, greater uh, chance of protecting yourself but also making the other person aware if they want to show that affection or have that intimacy with you, it needs to be all in, not more of a fleeting attraction. I'd just like to share with you in the solar event chart also about Uranus in Taurus, of course, still. That's actually in an angle with the moon, a sextile, which can make us aware of keeping a, a little bit of space, preserving our independence if it's not quite right. But that moon position is very, very close to Neptune. So I still feel that there could be some opaque, swirling, misty vibes around someone. Perhaps it's a professional uh, opportunity where someone is promoting something in a very positive way, but you need to know where you stand if a new job is going to come from it or it is to do uh, with investing your money or going for a business opportunity that you've seen for yourself. But just going back to the natal event chart and Venus in house six, if you do have pets, you can certainly enjoy this transit. Venus in house six, beautiful for the ownership of pets. But also what you're looking for is positive interactions with people at work. So a constructive work environment. And if you enjoy being of service to people, um, which is very Virgoin, which is very sixth house, again, Venus here, it is a great opportunity to provide some leadership because the sign of Capricorn is a cardinal sign. Therefore, it's very much about taking that lead. So that gives you a flavor of the overall uh, energies there. But what about those upcoming influences? So just to share those upcoming influences with you from the 19th to the 24th, Venus forges a lovely sextile to Saturn. If there is a relationship which is going well and is progressive and it feels right, Saturn in Pisces, and all the building blocks, Capricorn, Saturn, are going in place in a step-by-step, -step, stable way, that's really delicious. But also, we have in the early part of December, a gorgeous link between Venus and Uranus. That could bring someone into our worlds, either professionally, in terms of a, a, a business offer or a job, or personally, but it can happen very, very quickly. But equally, if a relationship we're in is a little bit too predictable and perhaps uh, uh, a degree of familiarity is breeding some contempt, Venus and Uranus in a trine is, is a prompt to action to try to freshen things up by being more spontaneous. But concurrent to that aspect, we are going to see Venus in a beautiful sextile to Neptune. So even if there are some disappointments manifesting in your situation at the present time with Venus's recent exact square to Neptune, there is the chance for things to improve. And also by the start of December, and Venus is preparing to make its way into Aquarius and merge with Pluto, which will be a huge event, there is a chance to see how things can transform in a much more constructive manner. I'm going to go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavour of what you can expect. But please do check out that special offer for your year 2025 personal horoscope and get your free gift of your zodiac, love, Chinese or Vedic forecast along with your 30% off and your life roadmap report. 
If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. So Aries, you may have found yourself hugely nostalgic over the last few days about someone from your past. Perhaps memories of them have been surfacing into your consciousness. Perhaps you've seen something on social media. Perhaps you've heard something through someone else. Or perhaps there's been someone that you've been seeing or dating that has really been quite alluring. But where do you stand if that's the case? Well, of course, it does depend on your unique situation and how you see that past relationship or this person that you have been connecting to recently. But I feel that uh, Venus moving into uh, the sign of Capricorn is asking you to stand in your power. If a relationship didn't work out in the past, there was a reason for that. If there was a lack of honesty or probity, that's going to be a big indication of what should guide you. If you are feeling pulled back because uh, the energy of Neptune and Saturn in your 12th house is very mutable. So mutable signs do get very caught up in being very nostalgic and reflective. Now you're an action sign, of course, and because Venus started off its journey in the sign of Sagittarius, uh, pushing you to seek out the truth of a situation, don't give up on that. So if someone has done the hard yards and you've uh, thought about the past as well and you feel there is good dialogue and a lot of ownership about how things could be better, I wouldn't say it's a complete no, but just be aware as Venus moves into uh, Capricorn where you're wanting something more concrete, you can only have something more concrete if the foundations are really secure and if you're not sure, just bear that in mind. It doesn't mean to say that things can't still evolve in a more positive way, but just keep your guard up somewhat at this time. And of course, Mars is in a fantastic location for you at the present moment. It really is helping you to glow up and show people just uh, how much charisma and personality that you've got. But getting the fifth house to align with the tenth house is a little bit of a challenge because Say, for example, you wanted something more solid quicker than the other person. That actually could be something that puts them off. And Mars in Leo is so warm and it's, you know, it, it can give you a lot of desire, but I don't think you can rush the process. Then again, if you're in a relationship which has been going from strength to strength, by all means, Venus going to the top of your chart could be the time to talk. Uh, about the future in a very optimistic way, perhaps chat with one another's folks, extended family, and get those stakeholders buy-in. Uh, talking of buy-in, if you are thinking about anything to do with property, Venus going through Capricorn is a very good transit for you. What about professionally? Well, those relationships can sometimes be very difficult these days because you know, we live in a world that's dominated by technology, dominated by uh, by automation to a degree. And those more intimate relationships that perhaps used to exist years ago, it's not to say they don't exist now, but then perhaps not as frequent and far more people work perhaps from home. And that creates a little bit of detachment. But if there is potential to work up more goodwill around where you work or who you want to work for, or you can build alliances with people, perhaps through trade organisations, uh, meet-up events, stuff like this, that would be a great way to expand your circle, circle, but also your sphere of influence. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac Love Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Taurus, Venus, your ruler, moving into your sister earth sign of Capricorn means that your earth tropicity is triggered. But for you, the ninth house can be about your desire to know the truth. The ninth house can be very much about penetrating through the mist. And because of Neptune's really tricky right angle to Venus, 
there may be someone and it may be someone in your friendship circle who really you've not been quite sure about what their intentions are perhaps you've not been quite sure about what yours are but there may have been a little bit of mystical connection over the last week particularly which has been very hard to resist what do you do well i feel that if someone's not telling you clearly about what they want then that's definitely a red flag if you're finding that you do try to tease out a firm response there is that avoidance or uh, detachment then again do listen to that because the ninth house is also the area where we can seek our freedom. So if a relationship hasn't been working, particularly if someone has been dishonest, you have every right to try to affirm your, uh, your personal space. And one of the great ways you can do that over the, the next weeks is to travel somewhere because Venus in the ninth house is fantastic for immersing ourselves in a particular environment. Now, whether it's some sun or snow that you go off looking for, or it's something you do more locally in terms of the arts or anything to do with performance. So you go and watch a play or a band. Those kind of things would be really calling out to you in a very powerful way over these next 26 days. So I think it can be very exciting. And, and if there is someone that you can hang out with, a friend, and enjoy those things, you could encounter someone who does really uh, appeal to the more sensuous and sensual part of your nature. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Gemini Venus has been squaring up to Neptune, Neptune in the part of your chart to do with the way you connect to the wider world. Venus has been in your relationships. If a work relationship has felt a little bit uh, demotivating because you're not getting clear a clear outline of what's expected and you're trying to be very diplomatic and get the prompts that may have been very frustrating for you. However, Venus going into the eighth house is where we can dive deep. So if you do need to just be much more astute in understanding perhaps the politics of wherever you're employed, Venus will definitely help you to decipher some of the code. Now in a purely romantic context, Venus going into eighth could see the temperature rise because the eighth house can be about intimacy but only where there is the connection that's working because the eighth house can also be where we decide to leave something where it isn't working. It can be the, a period of transformation before separation. However, let's look at it really positively for you. If you have been seeking some finance or you work for yourself, the chances are there could be an uptick in your income over the next few weeks. Also, it could be a close partner has some good fortune. You may even benefit from some kind of inheritance or legacy. It may not be that you'll get to know about that over these next 26 days. It's possible someone's putting in place provisions for you to benefit at a much later date, which I know sounds a bit opaque and not necessarily what you'd want to hear, but it could happen. Also, Venus in the eighth house can be where we're most devoted, invested and all in. So if there is someone that you are feeling very content with and you're also very comfortable being very physically close to one another, that intimacy can also improve during this transit too. But the eighth house is really a, a very much a 100% in or 100% out influence and after the square between Venus and Neptune which may have been making things very far from clear whether it's business relationships who you work for or a personal situation you're going to want to know more where you stand but if you're single don't be surprised if you find yourself having a steamy clinch under the mistletoe in the run-up to Christmas 
particularly with all the festive parties that are set to unfold. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. So Cancer, it's thrilling for you because Venus moves into your seventh house, which can bring a much greater sense of peacefulness to all sorts of interactions. And of course, you know from the natal chart that the ascendant is also right at the start of Cancer too. So whether we're talking about whole sign, equal house, or even Placidus, Venus is perfectly positioned for you. So if there have been some strains in the past and you want to reach out to someone and try and create a much more constructive atmosphere, if the other person is also open to listening and calmly discussing what happened, there is a chance of a reproachment that can delight you. But what about the square that's just occurred between Venus and Neptune? Well, because Neptune's in the part of your chart, which is very much to do with your ideology, and since 2012 has been in that location, it's really since Saturn moved in in March 2023 that you may have revisited some of the things that you were really excited about through the guise of Neptune. And maybe Saturn's been asking you to ask yourself some more scrutinizing questions. But Saturn in the ninth house can be very much a truth seeker. So whereas Neptune can mystify us quite easily, uh, Saturn may be seeing you revisit some kind of relationship scenario. And the reason for that is because, of course, Pluto has been broadly in your seventh house since 2008. And during that period, there may have been some tough stuff, big separations. Maybe you fronted up a firm boundary. Maybe at, at one point, you've been very, very tough. Was it to the point of ruthlessness? Only you could say. Or was someone very ruthless to you? We know it can come in as well as go out with all planets, but particularly Pluto. So whatever the, the landscape for you, Venus moving through your seventh house, where it really evokes the Libran energy, is is really fantastic. For example, if you have two people in a syn synastry situation who have planets in each other's seventh house, particularly if it's Venus or the Moon, that can be a great portent for a, a very positive, well-connected and, uh, and good relationship. Having Mars in the seventh house can be a different matter, of course. Still not impossible, uh, it's just a lot more fiery and feisty. But having Venus in the seventh house can just help us to look at things in a different way. We can celebrate the things we have, not be so focused on what makes us different, essentially. But if you have been asking yourself some searching questions recently, but didn't quite know how it would pan out, I feel that you are going to get greater clarity. Now, what about if you do meet someone from now until the 7th of December. Well, if it's someone that you felt very comfortable with, do listen to your sixth sense because that's your great gift. And I feel that Venus could bring someone in, whether it is a friend, whether it's someone you know already that you just get to know much better. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year, please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. So Leo, Venus moving into your sixth house, really interesting, the sixth house is the details. It's been in the fifth house where it's very glamorous, quite showy, and of course has been in that right angle with Neptune in your eighth house, which can be about sex. So if there has been someone that you found really captivating, but you don't know them any better now than when the connection first occurred, what Venus in Capricorn can do is help you to really uh, focus down on the facts and 
be very grounded and realistic essentially about what that alliance or that connection may have been about and of course Mars is in your sign so you have felt very much more inclined to take the initiative why not and initially when Venus moved into Sagittarius and and that connection to Mars is very very exciting even if it was by sign and therefore by element but what you've got here is a need to balance what your desires are as an individual with the practical realities and if you're in an existing relationship yeah it could be about being a bit more giving about the Christmas arrangements uh, ferrying people around uh, it won't necessarily be all about get but you can certainly create a lot of goodwill by some give please check out your free gift of your zodiac love chinese and indian vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year please see the link below if you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive zodiac forecast please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Virgo, Venus moving into your fifth house is fab. The fifth house is glamour, but it's also allure. It's also about uh, that magnetic energy that we can get if our charismas match with someone else. So you're going to get a much bigger push to be more outgoing. It doesn't change the fact that you know, we have got a Sagittarius energy working into uh, your personal situation as November goes on, which is much more to do with feelings, including the Mercury retrograde. But if there is someone that you want to go out and have fun with, a friend and dance and go and watch a band and just have a jolly good time, that definitely could see you connecting with someone. What's happened over the last week is that you may have felt a bit unsure about certain relationships, not necessarily even a romantic one, perhaps even around a family tie. Maybe you felt a bit cooler and but also quite sensitive at the same time. But you're going to be more flamboyant with Venus in the fifth house. If you are in a basically okay relationship, go out and have some playtime with your partner because certainly at the start of December if you do that you can really bring some delightful uplift into your situation. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. So Libra, Venus being your ruler, is moving from your third house, which is about quick chats and communication. The position of Neptune that you're emerging from the square from may have felt that someone wasn't necessarily being very reliable or backing up a commitment, but turning up and, and so forth. And that may have left you feeling a little unsure. So one of the things you can do with Venus in the sign of Capricorn is just retreat a little bit and make sure that you feel very, really solid in your inner world. So the most important relationship any of us can have is with ourselves. So when I sometimes do these videos, people will say, I'm not in a relationship and I don't want one. But I want to make it clear. The most important relationship is that personal relationship. So the fourth house can be about the family or extended family, the people who are most meaningful in our lives. And certainly when Venus forges that alliance to Saturn, which is going to be exact on the 22nd of November, there could be a, a really good period there, perhaps um, for a family relationship, if there's some collaboration or cooperation going on about who's going to do or provide what over the festivities. But I feel that what you're looking for around a romantic tie, as much as Mars is in a very sociable part of your scope, you're wanting to feel safe because Pluto's tested that safety for a long time, being in your fourth house. And preserving your boundaries has become very important to you. Now, the other part of Venus in the fourth house is it great for redecoration. So if you have got some people staying over the Christmas festivities, 
you may be decluttering, moving some furnishings, furnishings around, perhaps buying some new stuff, you know, the put me up beds and so on, or perhaps doing some last minute redecoration. And all of that will help to create a lovely vibe for you. But I have to say, once Venus moves into your sister, air sign of Aquarius on the 7th of December, you've got a lot of very exciting stuff to look forward to. So this is a, a preparation phase and it's the internal part of your needs that's really important. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Scorpio, Venus moving into your third house is really interesting because Pluto, your modern ruler, of course, is coming to the end of its journey in uh, your third house. So over the years since 2008, I think your thinking about your beliefs and how you interact with people has probably been transformed. I feel that Venus moving into the third house gives us a way of expressing ourselves with greater delicacy. And therefore, if there is something that you do want to say, and you can be quite blunt and to the, to the point, it can help you to sweeten any message. I think someone once put underneath one of my videos, you need the sugar as, as well as the vinegar. And I thought that was brilliant. So if there is something delicate that needs to be expressed, a great chance to do it. But of course, Venus has been in house too, which may have made you desirous of that sensuous uh, intimacy that can come with Venus, but it has been squaring it with Neptune in your fifth house of romance. So if you've been attracted to someone who doesn't quite share your values, just keep the lines of communication open. Maybe there's more to talk through, more to understand, and that could be a very constructive thing to do. Just to say, if you are someone who loves going on the karaoke, Venus in the third house, it's your chance to step into the spotlight and seize that stage and really enjoy yourself. But more seriously, if you are writing something, you have your own blog or website, or your job involves connecting with the public, you can do so with great uh, graciousness in these weeks to come. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Sagittarius, Venus moving out of your sign into Capricorn is brilliant for money. So even if you don't see it straight away, honestly, there could be some good news that's set to come. It's quite remarkable. Um, astrologers who have a big issue with sun sign astrology uh, would often think that what I'm saying is completely spurious. Because of doing this work for a very long time, writing columns for a very long time, it does work. But it might not work exactly how you hope it to work. So you're not necessarily going to win that prize draw for a house or the lottery. But you could gain something else. You could gain a greater sense of your value. And that's the most precious thing we ever, ever have. But also, don't underestimate how alluring you can be. So if there is someone that you're attracted to, um, your ability to draw them to you is definitely magnified. Enjoy the extra attention. If you are someone who really does uh, love good food and you are going to be attending some festive parties, you may very, find it very, very hard to resist the fare that is on offer. But in a more settled relationship, if you and a partner do align around your core values and around spending decisions, particularly at this time of year when there can be a temptation to burst the budget, I feel that that will help to keep things very solid indeed. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese 
and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Capricorn Venus moving into your sign is really intriguing because you've still got Mercury, the planet of communication, locked into your 12th house. The sun's going to be moving there later on in November. That 12th house energy can be very thoughtful. It can also be about where things come to a close. If you've gone through a period of a relationship finishing or you've been thinking very, very deeply about what to do, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, I must say, but if you have been analysing and weighing up uh, what to do about your connection to someone, that's likely to have been Venus going through the 12th house. You may have even been thinking a lot about someone from your distant past their energy very evocative the problem is that Neptune in the third house squaring with Venus in the 12th suggests you could have been on the end of some gossip or maybe you heard something third hand or maybe something you shared with someone confidentially has been leaked out which is very frustrating so Venus moving into your sign can help you to draw a line in the sand to a degree, move into your own power, but you do need to be aware that Mercury in the 12th house, in its pre-shadow, going into retrograde on the 26th, after the sun moves uh, in the third week of November into Sagittarius, means there is still some stuff still to sift through, I feel, to really understand what's going on for you. But if you do want to start afresh around your romantic situation, don't underestimate how much uh, attention that you're going to be pulling to you, particularly at the start of December. You might be surprised by how suddenly you've got more than one admirer beating their path to your door. And that can be very flattering indeed. And if you don't see yourself as being an active seeker of romance, don't be surprised if it's a friend or a number of friends who invite you out spontaneously at the start of December. Or well, there could be a chance to go to a show, watch a play, or go to a Christmas party, which can bring a lot of pleasure into your situation. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. So Aquarius, the most important date you can mark down in your calendar through this Venus transition is at its very end. Why am I saying that? Well, it's because Venus is going to apply to Pluto in your sign on the 7th of December. That's going to be a hugely transfer transformational moment. But also, of course, Pluto is going to return to your sign on the 19th of November within Venus's journey through your 12th house. Now, at the current time, the sun in the sign of Scorpio is pushing you to raise your profile. It is in a quincunx with Jupiter, suggesting you shouldn't try too hard or not big yourself up in a way that you can't follow up on. So Venus in the 12th house is suggesting those quiet, delicate soundings that you're doing, reaching out to people, getting their opinion, perhaps asking for some guidance, perhaps being in touch with people from your past. That actually can help to shape your approach to your professional relationships. When it comes to your personal ones, Venus in 12, got to be honest, can mean that something isn't working and you're examining what to do. Also, because Venus in 11, uh, your more noble way of relating, you may have encountered someone who wasn't very noble, whether it is about money, a point of view, or about their loyalty to you. And I don't mean romantically only. It could have been a friendship that's disappointed you over the last week. However, with Venus moving into that 12th house, if ever there was a time to just withdraw a little bit and just get your bearings on what you want, the internal part of you, that's a very powerful thing to do. It also can be a great time to release 
anything from your past in terms of pain and bring the peacefulness of Venus into the deepest part of your consciousness. But it is preparing you for that glorious event on the 7th of December, which is going to really be like a spark and see you blaze up in the run up to Christmas at full power. Please check out your free gift of your Zodiac, Love, Chinese and Indian Vedic forecast for 2025 with my special personal offer for next year. Please see the link below. Welcome Pisces. Your Venus through Capricorn forecast really gives you an opportunity to think about your connections, your network, your friendships, your alliances, the club societies and meetups that you belong to. If you have been rather caught up with work and professional stuff, a great chance to, to really invest in time in building up those connections. There may be someone in your circle who's actually more uh, drawn to you and more aware of you than you're aware of. Because Mars is in a very hard working and pragmatic part of your chart at the moment, Venus moving into 11 suggests that it could be a colleague that you're gonna forge a much greater alliance with over the next few weeks not necessarily romantically but if you do why not but if you are in a relationship venus in the 11th house does ask us to think about the friendship dimension it's really important i feel to have the chemistry to have that spark to feel that someone does impact on our senses but you know that apart friendship is a much underestimated element or uh, constituent part of the best of ties because it does help us to forgive the things that we may find a bit awkward if our partner is our best friend as well as our lover that's an awesome mix so whatever uh, parts of your situation whether it's your relationships at work or in the family or with people immediately around you in your neighborhood if there are good pleasing and constructive and positive links those are definitely the ones to celebrate at this time. But if you are thinking about your long-term future, which is also about the 11th house, and you don't feel that someone quite fits into that, then this could be a time of reconsideration. If you've yet to check out your year 2025 deep dive Zodiac forecast, please see the link beneath this video and you can watch it now. Thank you so much for joining me for this Venus in Capricorn deep dive. Take care, all the best and goodbye.